Good morning. Welcome to the STJC Virtual Worship Experience. We are located in downtown San Antonio, Texas. Our pastor, Reverend Al Smith, and First Lady Reverend B. Smith, and the entire STJC family invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy a word from the Lord. Before the sermon, we will be lighting the Advent candle. For those of you who would like to participate, we invite you to light a virtual candle. And as we continue to celebrate the month of December as the National Month of Giving for Nonprofits, we ask that you might consider STJC as one of the recipients of your year-end tax-deductible gift. More than anything, we want you to know that we are just so glad that you decided to join us. Please feel free to like, share, and comment.
James. Our scripture today is from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 34 through 35. Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin and have no intimacy with any man? Then the angel replied to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you like a cloud. And for that reason, the Holy Spirit pure, sinless child shall be called the Son of God. And listen, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For with God nothing is or ever shall be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, May it be done according to your word. And the angel left her. This is the third week of Advent. The last two weeks we've spoken of hope and faith. This week, though, we will experience the joy of the season. As we reflect on the issues that we find ourselves in with this pandemic, UPS and Amazon are unscathed and are presently on a roll. All of the hustle and the bustle, the anticipation in the air points to the Christmas season with filled trucks with merchandise everywhere. Someone's going to have a great Christmas to be sure. I was surprised by the Christmas gift that arrived from my sister today. It's so beautifully wrapped and of course, I've already put it under the tree. Yet in anticipation, I know my curiosity can get the best of me, but I don't want to spoil the wrapping. And yet I, ha I can't help but wonder though, what if the gift is a disappointment? Well, I have to say, the minute I saw it, I wondered what it was and was so filled with joy. I know she went through a lot of trouble to make sure that it got here at the right time. Being so close to Christmas, it reminds me of the unexpected wonder and joy of the shepherds when they received the most amazing gift from their heavenly father. Luke tells it like this. Nearby shepherds were lying in the field, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them and the Lord's glory shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. You gotta know that's a beautiful gift from, from beyond. It's really what this time is all about. I ask you to take the time to pray and light the third candle that reminds us of the joy-filled anticipation of the greatest gift ever given. Ordinary Christmas song. Go ahead and put your hands together. Yeah, come on. Yeah, listen. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. 
saints, oh come ye, oh come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of Angels. Oh,
Greetings, I'm Pastor Al. As we light the Advent candles of hope, faith, and joy, reflect on that's what the world needs today. Let us pray. Dear God, we invoke your presence in this worship experience. Help me to open and present to your glory all that you want to announce in my life. At times, I feel unworthy and wonder why you chose me, but I'm grateful and I surrender to your call and favor for my life. Let me be filled with joy as I look to the future and overcome the fear of what you have in store for me. Lord, we ask for your healing, your comfort, your strength. Forgive us of all of our sins. Now use me, Lord, until you use me up. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Our text is found in Luke, the first chapter, the 37th through the 38th verses, NIV. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angels left her. God's word for the people of God and the people of God said, thanks be to God. If you wish to move mountains tomorrow, you must stop lifting stones today. Can I say that again? If you wish to move mountains tomorrow, you must stop lifting stones today. An African proverb. Last Sunday, we lit the candle for faith. Because of our faith and hope in Jesus, we can celebrate. Despite an increase in the number of people affected with COVID-19 since Thanksgiving, where many chose to gather with family and friends. On Tuesday, a 90-year-old woman was the first in the UK to be vaccinated. In the US, we see a glimmer of hope as the possibilities of the first injections starting at the end of the week. Today, we light the candle of joy. As believers, our faith is essential to us. In Hebrews 11, 1, the scriptures remind us, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It takes Faith to accept that God does the impossible, that which is not reasonable. Think with me on the subject, mission impossible. By all reason, it is impossible for a virgin to give birth and to give birth to a Messiah unheard of. So let us focus on the miracle working power of God in the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's spotlight on verse 37. Mary utters the following words, for nothing is impossible with God. We need to give praise for the mother of our Lord that she was a believer. She was a faith walking and talking believer. What God promised, she believed without reservation, even if it seemed utterly impossible, ridiculous, she believed. The text shows us that the road now led toward Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph had to go from Nazareth to Bethlehem. For ages, the people of Israel had been waiting for them to arrive, found in Micah 
the fifth chapter, the second verse. This was the fulfillment of the promise. Angels looked forward to their appointment. Words of the prophet awaited fulfillment. Elizabeth was waiting for the baby in Mary's womb to soon enlighten the world. Mission impossible. Allow me three observations of our text. The power of God will cover you. The power of Jesus will cover you. The power of the Holy Spirit will cover you. Mission impossible. Observation number one. The power of God will cover you. Verse 26, 28, and 35. Notice how God covers us through the angels, through his favor, through his overshadowing us. He gives us a witness like Elizabeth and Zechariah who were advanced in years, yet they gave us John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus. This was to encourage Mary to help eliminate her fears and concerns, to remind her that nothing is impossible with God. And that's why David said, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Psalm 32, 1. God will cover us by angels, by his favor, by him overshadowing us. He will give us a witness to his miracles. Mission impossible. Observation number two. The power of Jesus will cover you. Verses 31, 34, and 38. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. Are one, the blessed Holy Trinity. But to save the people from their sins, Mary, you must give birth to Jesus Christ who will be the Savior and Lord. Matthew says, while he was speaking, a bright cloud came over them and the voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son and I am wonderfully pleased with him. Obey him. Matthew, the 17th chapter, the fifth verse found in the living Bible. Jesus covers you. Come on, somebody. Jesus will protect you. Jesus will guide you. And the cloud will cover you. All we have to do is accept his covering. Mission impossible. Observation number three. The power, power of the Holy Spirit will cover you. Verses 35 to 36. The Holy Spirit will will come upon you, Mary, a virgin, unmarried, was about to become pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And an angel told her that Elizabeth was pregnant, so Mary would believe. And she accepted this, and she uttered these words, nothing is impossible with God. And then in verse 38, she called herself a servant, an outward sign of her confirmation of the power of the Holy Spirit. God can do the impossible. Understand, it was the power of the Holy Spirit that resurrected Jesus. And the power of the Holy Spirit can work miracles in your life. Nothing is impossible for God. Paul said that out of his glorious unlimited resources, his strengthening of the Holy Spirit will come. Ephesians 3, 16. Pour out your spirit on me, Lord. Just pour out your spirit on me. Allow your Holy Spirit to fill me. Allow your Holy Spirit to bless me. Mission impossible. Nothing is impossible 
to God. Oh, come on, somebody. Let God, let Jesus, let the Holy Spirit cover you. And then you will understand that he knows your name. In the words of Tasha Cobb Leonard, he knows <laughs> my name. He knows my name. Oh, how he walks with me and he tells me that I am his own. No battle can turn me. No mountain can stop me because you hold my hand. Now I'm walking in your victory because the power is within me. No giant can defeat me because you hold my hand. No fire can burn me because you hold my hand. He knows my name. He knows my name. There is nothing impossible for God. Go ahead and touch that screen. If you're a witness, healed your cancer, healed your diabetes, healed you from your heart attack, healed you from your stroke. Nothing is impossible with God. Go ahead and touch that screen. He made a way for your family, saved your son, saved your daughter, saved your spouse. And you say, Reverend, don't leave me out. Save me and wash me and covered me with the blood. Nothing is impossible for God. Oh, come on, somebody. Place an amen in that chat room. If you are walking a miracle, come on, somebody. If you are walking miracle, just say amen. Nothing is impossible with God. Place it in that chat room and say praise the Lord. If he took away your depression, those addictions, that appetite of suicide, and say hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Now send those hearts and thumbs up and bless the Lord right now. I wish I had a witness in here. Now share and create that watch party and say that he's making a way in my life. Come on, somebody. Share it with somebody else. The mission appeared impossible, but with God, all things are possible. There is nothing impossible for God. Well, I pray that we bless someone today. If you're in that number and you want to send a shout out and call his name right now, you want to invite Jesus Christ into your life. You want to confess of your sins. You want to repent of your sins and establish a relationship with Jesus the Christ very first time. We call that conversion. You say, Reverend, I'm saved. My family and I have been looking for a new church home. And we are looking at the STJC. How can we become members? We call that membership and we will be more than happy to receive you. Details are following. Now you say, I'm saved. I grew up in the church. I attended church school, but somewhere along the line, I thought I outgrew the church. I'm ready to come home. Well, you may have given up on the church, but the Lord never gave up on you. And if you're wanting to come right now, we call that rededication. So right now, just give him your hand. And then last but not least, you may live out of the country, you may live out of the state, you may even live out of the city. Your work schedule sometimes will not allow you to worship on Sundays. With churches closed due to COVID, you say, I'm looking to try to get my praise on. 
Well, we welcome you and we call that virtual membership. And on Facebook Live and YouTube, you can become a virtual member. If you're interested, details are in that chat room. Well, we want to thank you for your generosity. As partners in our ministry, we continue to feed the hungry. Through our food distribution program, we provide clothing for those who are homeless, assist in our community projects where we are able to distribute face masks and caring for our first responders and essential workers. Now there's an app on your cell phone called Giveify, and you can give through that app or you can transfer funds from your bank through Zelle. Or you just can mail your check on your money order to the church. Details are following. Lastly, we would like to thank you for a moment of your time. The Lord willing, we will see you next week same time, same station. And remember these words. Mission impossible? No, nothing is impossible with God. We love you. See you next week. Hands up. If somebody prayed for you, stand up. If somebody prayed for you, open your mouth, yeah. If somebody prayed for you, do I have a witness? Listen. Amen, brother. Amen. If somebody prayed for me, have me on the mind. Took the time to pray for me. Oh, oh, oh. pray for me. Have me on that mind Took the time to pray for me Oh, oh, oh pray for me Have me on that mind Took the time to pray for me Oh, oh, oh Somebody pray for